Oh, it's a long story. What would you like to know? <laughs> the concept? It's an original story and it's based on my stage play, which I wrote a year and a half ago. <laughs> a year and a half ago. And we produced it on stage in Mississauga. Frank 11 and his sister Caroline 15 arrive in Attic Town where the great syndicate um, is ruling and robbing the citizens. An army of shadows kidnaps everyone who's uh, out after dark and the patrolling thieves make the daylight miserable for everyone. If you go to Attic Town, you find a place where the streets have no names and you can never turn back. You end up in chaos. It's just like in life. We can never go back. If we go back, the re reality changes dramatically. It just doesn't happen that way. We always have to go forward. I don't know. I love fantasy. <laughs> I love fantasy. I'm a dreamer. And um, I think it's the best genre because uh, it allows us to, uh, to fulfill all our needs. Whenever we watch fantasy, it's not just entertainment, but our needs are fulfilled. The need for, uh, for fairness, the need for truth, the need for happy ending. It's all what we get in fantasy. It's my favorite genre. In that story, Oh no, they all beautiful. I love Carlo, I love Kunka, I love Danlor, I love uh, our Frank and Caroline. I love Conroy, who's very nasty and <laughs> mean. I love just everyone, everyone. First of all, when you, uh, when you put a story on stage, it has to happen in just one place. So you're limited by space. And um, that would somehow affect your, your style, your writing, and the characters, and, and the psychology of the play, and everything, if you want to say that. Um, it's a different media. Stage is a very different media than film. Stage is all about drama. It's all about acting, while your film is all about visuals, sound, and acting. It's, uh, it's very different. As, you, as, as we know, film, um, the, f the first, uh, let's say, in the old days, there was only cinematography and moving pictures, and that's how film was created. Then we added sound. And of course, we always had actors who had to act, and they were acting differently without, without sound. Uh, but it's a, it's a different media. So you can't compare those two. I always admire people who uh, make adaptation, Shakespeare, on screen, etc. It's very courageous because it's very difficult. I grew up in Poland and I went to study fine arts at Fine Arts College and after that, of course, I became an actress because that's how it works. <laughs> I think it was my, it was the next step uh, to become a director because as soon as I became an actress and um, I started to direct and write right away and produce. <laughs> so I guess that was, that was very natural. And when I came to um, Canada, then I knew right away that in order to pursue with my uh, directing career, I needed to go to university and I studied at Ryerson, I studied filmmaking. And then uh, my first job after I finished university was a producer. I was a producer for a film company. And I produced a feature with them, a small, low budget feature. And I produced and directed commercials. I worked also um, with some musicians, on, um, we did some music videos. Um, and I, direct, I wrote, directed, and produced a bunch of short films, and um, they were screened in international film festivals in Palm Springs, California, Europe, Raindance in London, and others. I think there were about six of them or so. 
and I founded a kids stage, which is an um, acting school for kids and teenagers, ages 5 to 20. Actually, we're expanding because our students just don't want to quit. I mean, the eldest students don't want to quit. Even though this is not a film strictly for kids and teenagers, but it addresses uh, the young person in all of us. So uh, that's what it is. It's a fairy tale for everyone. And how, why is it that it addresses the, the, the kid in the world? Because we all strive for fantasy. We all want to live in the world that is perfect, that is ideal, that is the way we want it to be, and that's fantasy and um, we fulfill our dreams. We identify with uh, characters. We all love fantasy. Uh, basically, I haven't met a person in my life who wouldn't be enchanted by such uh, stories like uh, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, or the recent Harry Potter books. Um, we all love them. It speaks to us. We all are young inside, forever. Every day was wonderful and every moment was my favorite moment. We have a terrific cast and we've been very honored to be working with such wonderfully talented people. They, they're great actors. I, expect, I suspect that they're the best actors in the world and so I personally feel very honored to be working with them. And um, then going through um, all the beautiful events that happened during the shoot and you people know what they were, <laughs> but anyhow, um, and then, uh, speaking of our crew, my God, the atmosphere on the set. Can you tell me about that? Oh, it was the best. I mean, um, we are family at After Rain Films. This is just a family that we are. And um, every day is a pleasure. We don't have long days. We don't believe in, in uh, finishing on the day around 2 a.m. We finish around 7 or 8, so it's, it's the ideal time. We work fast, and because we all are very dedicated to what we do, the shoot goes just uh, beautifully, smoothly, and that's what it is. The atmosphere is terrific. First of all, to put together such a big production um, is a big challenge, is, is a huge challenge, and we did it, we're very proud of what we did. But uh, for instance, let's take as an example, um, usually when a fantasy film is being shot, sets are built. Set designers come to the set and they build beautiful fantasy sets, and we did not have beautiful sets because of the way how we shot the film, a very spontaneous and very quick, and we didn't want to wait and waste our time because we needed to shoot, we needed to shoot it this summer. So what we did was uh, we found wonderful, just wonderful locations. And because there are so many locations in the, in the film, almost every scene happens in a different place. We have been traveling a lot, so we had to find many beautiful locations, and we did, starting with University of Toronto, beautiful Gothic buildings, and, uh, and then going to Bowmanville Museum, museum where the wind at my back was shot, and 1800s Western Village, and beautiful farms, and wonderful rose gardens um, in, um, in Ontario. All the sets were extremely picturesque, and fairylandish, I would say. So we were very lucky and we have this beautiful fairy tale look that we achieved by finding wonderful locations instead of building sets. So that was a great challenge. And we've done it. <laughs> uh, we just shot part one. The title of the trilogy is Shadowland. The working title was Frank Big Baba and 40 Thieves. But now we've changed it because, you know, uh, the title was good on stage. However, film is a different media, as I mentioned. So the title of the film is Shadowland. And the first part has a subtitle, The Legend. And in that first part, we're learning about the legend, about a story of a hero who arrives in a very scary Shadowland, and specifically in Attic Town. And things are happening beyond understanding. However, they very uh, tense, very intense, 
And um, as I see the story, there is always something for everyone to identify with the story. Because it's a story about becoming a hero. And all of us are heroes in our lives. Every day we're becoming heroes in our lives. And that's what the story is about, among other things. And it's also a story about growing up and remaining young and about following one's dreams and about knowing that there is nothing in the world that we are not able to achieve. Everything we want, we can have. And everything, uh, and, every, and whoever we want to be, we can become. That's what the story is about. And it has a happy ending. Happy ending is something that all of us deserve. Yes, we shot on high definition because we do believe in the new era, the digital era, and it's also a beautiful media uh, that transfers to film wonderfully. We are, we are hoping to launch uh, many other projects and we are hoping to inspire many other writers and directors and perhaps some of them will be willing to work with us. We invite uh, writers uh, to submit their scripts and we are interested in films that are fresh, that are new, that are inspiring, that give us hope and that uh, will keep us at the edge of, at, at the edge of, of our seats in the cinema. We had um, terrific martial artists on our set. All of them are champions, most of them are champions. Uh, quite a few of them uh, were uh, representing national Canadian team. Uh, we had a coach on board as well from Canadian national teams and other wonderful people, masters with black belts and all sort of skills that, oh, it's, it's just, um, difficult to imagine that uh, so many talented and skilled martial artists would be living in Toronto area. We never knew until we started to film. For many of them it was a film debut and indeed they did very well and we, we are so eager to work with them on many other upcoming projects. They're very talented people and great actors. Some people might have an impression that we were doing a martial arts movie and it wasn't a martial arts movie, we were doing a fantasy film and uh, the shadows, the army of shadows, the, the bad guys who kidnap everyone were played by martial artists indeed. However, we did not use any particular martial arts style. What we did is we invited our fight choreographer to come up with a fantasy fantasy, not only fight style for the shadows but also the movements, the way they they moved, uh, the way they walked was a fantasy style and was closely related to martial arts. However, it was different in a way that was invented especially for the film. Nathan is a very special boy. He's not only very, very talented, but he's also wise, much beyond his age. He's, uh, he was the perfect actor for the part of Frank, because Frank is a character who's uh, not only a very special boy, but also very wise, wise beyond his age. And Nathan was just uh, a perfect Frank. When we saw him, we knew right away it was him. We just knew that. He's, uh, he's very respectful of other actors. Um, he's very humble. He works very hard. I know that he does have some idea about how talented he is, but he does not think that, um, that this is the most important thing. Hard work, hard work. Uh, that's another uh, wonderful, wonderful actor. And again, when we auditioned people for Dalnor, and then we auditioned again and again and again, and finally Andrew walked in the room, he opened his mouth and we knew it was Dalmor. And the same goes for Caroline. Um, she just, uh, she was better than a dozen other actresses trying for the part. And uh, everybody who saw her says, oh my God, this is Caroline. She looks exactly and she moves exactly and, she, and she's exactly the character that we, portray, that we sort of pictured when we were uh, reading the script. Uh, all of our cast is uh, right on. 
What happens in the next? Well, we go in deeper and we're finding more about shadows in Shadowland. We go in deeper into the Shadowland and that's it. I'm not going to tell you. Well, you know, Frank wants to have a girlfriend, but uh, I don't know if we, if we go that route. <laughs> he really asked me, Nathan really asked me if he could have a girlfriend in, in the second film. But I'm not sure. I have to discuss it with his mom. My dreams? I don't have any dreams because I already live my dreams. Um, I love making films and um, it's become a reality for the past many years. And um, that's what it is. <laughs>